Hello everyone. My name is Anna. I'm part of Aussie's group in Adelaide and I want to welcome everyone who is here already for our first uh, session for this Education Summit 2022. We are very glad to have this event going on for five days with a lot of our team joining us to share information about different courses in different universities and also having all our partners here. Uh, today's topic is about IT courses, so emerging IT programs and career pathways, including artificial intelligence, cloud computing, cybersecurity, data science, business analytics, and much more. With me, joining from Aussies in Mozon Lakes, also here in South Australia, I welcome Manpreet Kaur. How are you today, Manpreet? I'm very well. Thank you very much for asking, Anna. Manpreet is a qualified education counselor here at Aussies Group. She's also a team leader specialized in helping international students to, to take up IT courses. She has been part of the team for more than four years now as an education advisor, and she harbors a strong desire and passion to help international students to achieve the best career outcome. Joining us, we also have from Swedborn University Technology, uh, Dr. Man F. Lowe. I hope I pronounced it right. How are you today? Uh, good, thank you. Thank you. Uh, he is a Deputy Department Chair for the Department of Computer Science and Software Engineer from Swedborn University of Technology. That's amazing. Thank you so much for being here today. Pressure. Also from the university, we have Lydia Windows. She is a regional manager in the international in the University for Australia and Oceania regions. Welcome, Lydia. How are you today? Thank you, Anna. I'm very good. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you much for having us here. Thanks. After uh, in the session, we will also have a student from the university joining us to share their experience in their studies there. So I think it's going to be very rich uh, information for everyone who is joining us on this session. Uh, before we start, I want to let all the audience know that we will be taking questions in the end of the session. So if you want to ask any questions to Manfred and also to the university representatives, just write down in the comment session and I'm going to uh, do that in the end of this session. So definitely you will have all your queries and doubts uh, figured out before we leave today. <laughs> Also, we are very excited for this event. So we, we from Aussies, we have organized two promotions to make sure that these sections are very interactive. So uh, we are having giveaways for the people who uh, interact most with us during these sessions. So the first one, we have a bumper cash prize to claim for the ones who leave the most descriptive reviews under a Facebook post. I will share with you guys uh, exactly what it looks like and I'll also place the link in the comment section. So you just have to tag uh, your friends and also tag Oz Education Summit 2022 in the comment section along with your feedback. So we really appreciate if you guys can give us an honest uh, feedback about this session and of course we'll keep improving for the next sessions. Also the second uh, giveaway uh, it's for the most participative audience members from the chat box here on Teams, and they will be eligible for free giveaways such as free PT coaching, I IELTS coaching, PR consultations, and many more other services that we provide here at Aussies Group. We encourage you to be part of it, communicate with us, and we want to hear for, for, from you your feedback as well. Uh, I will just share now uh, the giveaways so you guys can have a look in our social media and write down your reviews there. I believe you can see my screen how the post looks like. And now I will hand over to Manpreet so she can start her presentation. Thank you, Manpreet. Thank you so much, Anna, for such a great introduction. And I welcome all the participants, all the students who have taken time to join this session. And I, we will obviously try to make sure that you will enjoy this session a lot. There's a lot of information for you. Uh, we need all of you to open yourself to receive all the information that we are going to share. Uh, it can be a little 
complicated at times also because we've chosen very creative topic this time. Um, and Aussie Scoop obviously always takes initiative to bring forward uh, lots and lots of creative uh, things that we try so that students can get a lot of help from us. Um, today, um, before I start the session, I'm just going to quickly share my screen so that all of you can view. So just to start with, um, I think I will just say one thing which lots and lots of students can relate to um, if you're born from 90s. Uh, I think the biggest advantage that 90s kid had is that uh, they got exposed to uh, the technological era and also the era where you used to have the mobile phone with the big antenna, I remember. So obviously, um, it's it, it will be undoubtedly that technology has evolved, it has emerged, and it has application in pretty much all the sectors. Lots and lots of international students, they express their interest to obviously study in the foreign countries solely because they believe they will be introduced to a lot and lot of practical learning, some new technology and smart classes. So everywhere you would see that technology has immersed so much that we are so influenced with the technology in every aspect of our life. In this particular session, I will be talking about some of the most emerging technologies that has evolved in Australia. And international students can take benefit of obviously studying in Australia by obviously learning all those technologies. To begin with, um, I'll start with what does these emerging technologies does to us? Obviously, as you all know that um, these technologies that has developed over the years, it has obviously changed humanity uh, completely. Uh, we have seen lots of technology uh, that is introduced into the market and we all get so gobsmacked with those things, uh, talking about uh, automotive cars, I was just reading an article and I just found out that there's a flying car uh, which is now going to be uh, available to, to general public also. Although um, this, these are the things you might have heard. Um, these are the things that lots and lots of people always wish that, okay, the technological advancement can also influence their life, can make their life very, very easy. So obviously, obviously the reason of emerging these technology is to obviously make sure that all the fundamental tasks that we do that can be improved. So these technology help us in obviously um, improving the fundamental task. Not only that, um, as I said, it has application in all, uh, all the areas, all the sector, all the market. So studying IT will not limit you to one industry. Uh, you can always explore various sector, different sectors while you're studying this program. So obviously it has a potential to develop new products and access to the new market. And you could obviously work more efficiently and you can also improve the bottom line. Obviously, um, studying technology can help you to pick the better target consumer preferences. Obviously, digital platform, um, ever since COVID happened, we have seen that uh, more and more businesses are um, using technologies. Um, lots and lots of systems are becoming digital. Uh, so the use of technology is something that, um, that has made everyone's life so easy. So in this particular session, these emerging technologies that we are going to cover, which has made a huge impact on human life, is basically these four. Artificial intelligence, Aina has already mentioned some of them. Artificial intelligence, quantum computing, blockchain, internet of things. Now, obviously, uh, when we talk about these four, uh, artificial intelligence is something that lots and lots of students might have already heard. But quantum computing, blockchain, internet of things, I'm sure it is, it is something new for all of you as well. So in this particular session, we'll introduce you what are the application of these emerging technologies and how you can learn about these technologies in the Australian education system. Starting from the first one, Artificial intelligence. Well, lots, a lot of people probably have seen um, that artificial intelligence has merged into many sectors. Um, I believe everybody knows what robots does. Everybody know what is the automated system. So artificial intelligence definitely um, soon after, I would say early 2000 and later in late 2000, we've seen that it has emerged a lot. Uh, now people know that how artificial intelligence can mimic uh, even even some of the impossible tasks which a normal human being cannot do so obviously the the, the idea behind uh, developing artificial intelligence was to collection of uh, obviously different sorts of technology that can solve the complex problem and 
the task that it can perform, uh, the things that it, artificial intelligence can do, obviously uh, a human, uh, a normal human or a normal person cannot do. So these machines are developed with a technology which is which is desired to give the designed, uh, desired output and objectives that will help the human in achieving the desired output. And of course, um, if I have to give a popular example, um, we all might have spoken with Siri in our, you know, lonely time, asking Siri how we are, how we are not. Um, Tesla, of course, is another um, great example of artificial intelligence. I believe that they have done wonders. Uh, soon enough, I, I, I always, I'm very fascinated with this topic because I uh, particularly, I always believe that the technology has no length. So obviously, the way technology is developing, um, obviously, you might have heard about Tesla's uh, you know, futuristic uh, aim and visions about uh, life on other planets. So all this is is, is possible because, um, you know, human, we've developed technologies, we've developed artificial intelligence to obviously do the things which which is, seems impossible for anyone to do. Um, it also is believed that uh, this industry, uh, artificial industry, will definitely add trillions of dollars to the global economy in the coming years. Next one is blockchain. Now, obviously, this may seem, you know, um, little new. Uh, lots and lot of students may not be familiar with this term, what blockchain does. So blockchain, basically, it is a digital platform uh, that records, verifies, and stores transactions, uh, which is shared across the network of computers. But there's a set agreed rule behind it, obviously, just to make sure it is it is safe. Along with that, um, this particular uh, method, which is now introduced into the computers, this, this has helped a lot in various sectors. As I said, uh, the technology cannot be just applied to one sector. It, it has an application in pretty much all the sectors. So this blockchain, ever since this technology has emerged, it has helped in many ways. Uh, it has helped in financial transaction. It has helped in government services and tracing history of a product. If I have to elaborate a little bit more around what financial transaction and all uh, sorts of things are, for instance, as you all know, people, especially from the real estate, um, they would they would understand that when you have to do the fast clearing and settlement, um, that sometimes it takes a lot of time to do that. So obviously, by using blockchain technique, you can do the fast clearing of your settlement times, and also it reduces the credit. Uh, credit risk and capital um, requirements, which also obviously eventually reduce the transaction cost across all the boards. This help a lot in the in the real estate um, you know business. Along with that, if we talk about the government services, so it has helped a lot in in developing a technology that can verify the human identity uh, through the system without revealing their personal information. I know um, obviously these kind of technology will make and evolve, uh, obviously, humanity to the next level is, is what I think of it, obviously. And along with, obviously, various services, as I said, uh, government services, financial transaction, and tracing history of the product is also, as we've seen, um, you know, there are many um, digital technologies that has developed which track uh, the uh, physical goods. And obviously, it reduces any risk of bringing any funny things, obviously, and also helps the government to make sure there is no fraud or there is no, you know, ethical um, source diamonds or any luxury items transported. So this helps a lot in tracing the history of a product. Coming back to the next one, uh, quantum computing. Uh, the name seems maybe pretty heavy. Uh, I don't know what this is about, what it does to us, you know, how it is relevant to my education. So. Everything that we will discuss in this presentation has has an effect, has some sort of relevance and can certainly help you out if you are interested uh, to be the IT professional. Uh, quantum computing is is another technology which has obviously emerged as in, in Australia and of course various parts part of the country. Uh, it is basically um, a technology that uh, exponentially increase the power of the computer. Now, as I just gave an example of artificial intelligence, um, it has obviously um, a close relationship with, with artificial intelligence. As you can see, the artificial intelligence does some of the impossible tasks, uh, you know, which can be done by a human. So obviously to amplify that power, uh, quantum computing, computing has, a, has a big role in that. 
You might have also heard um, about supercomputers. Uh, IBM was working on, on that one. So obviously every company, they have also now understood how these technology can you know, evolve their businesses, which is why this is widely used in, in every sector. It also helps us to obviously solve the problems that the existing computer cannot do. Uh, as I said, it, it increases the power of the computer. So obviously um, this particular, uh, you know, computing uh, computers are basically known as supercomputers, have the higher power than the normal computers. This also can be used in the wide range of, uh, you know, industries. To give one example, uh, I would say weather forecast. So quantum computing can can help a lot in um, you know helping the the modern computers forecasting the weather much more quickly. The current systems you know takes a longer to predict the weather forecast. Uh, by using the quantum computing, we can have faster weather uh, forecast in the different system settings, and that that will help us a lot a lot in obviously saving during the natural calamity or any other emergency. Apart from that. It also has a huge uh, role in the financial modeling uh, in the finance industry. If I have to talk about, for example, if if you would like to, you know, plan your investment and risk on investment, and there are a lot of other factors that you have to, you know, plan out when you are going to reset your financial budget or when you are doing the financial planning of the business. So with quantum computing, you get a help in obviously developing a technology that helps you to sort that issue out, and you can do your financial planning much more well in comparison to the standard technologies that are being used. Next comes Internet of Things. Um, Internet of Things is, is not different. If if I will explain you, obviously it is, it is something that we use in day-to-day -day life also as the technology has emerged a lot, but Internet of Things does nothing but use the sensors. Now these sensors, it can record sound. As I said, it can record touch, it can record movement and temperature. Um, out of all the technologies that I've discussed, I think uh, this one and artificial intelligence I found the most interesting one because it, it uses sensors and it can also detect the chemical composition, which for me is the is very interesting thing. So it is uh, available, obviously, availability of the internet connectivity and increased computing power. That is one aspect of Internet of Things. But if we have to, uh, let's say, talk about in practical life, uh, what these sensors basically do, as I said, it can record chemical composition also, and it can automatically collect the data about people. But if we have to give an example, as I've mentioned, uh, you know, the sensors in the soil, healthcare devices, energy and water infrastructure. So to give you a little brief, um, for example, there is a smart healthcare devices which are now developed uh, now these can monitor uh, patients and also uh, the medical authorities. Now these smart technologies can obviously improve the medical infrastructure. Along with that, uh, its use in the soil uh, is actually very interesting. It, it helps in detecting the moisture in the soil, which can help the farmers to, you know, um, to, to plan all their crop production very well. So obviously it, it has a great importance for the farmers as well. Apart from that, it can also help in energy and water uh, infrastructure because it can um, better track um, everything and can also maintain the uh, management and everything, including in all those processes. Now, obviously, it's a million dollar question. Uh, we know technology has developed. Um, it has a practical application in all the industry. But having said that, every country is now adopting you know, different technologies. Uh, they are obviously moving forward and uh, every economy has adopted a lot of digital technologies to improve their system, to improve the efficiency. Now, having said that, we know what its importance, but now the question is, why should you choose Australia as a destination to study these technologies? Now, obviously, um, if you would have the access, if you would just read the Australian National Strategy for International Education, 2021 till 2030, in all the strategies, Australia has hinted that now their focus will definitely will be a lot on uh, boosting the international education sector. Now, obviously, pre-COVID, things were very different. Um, it was obviously better for everyone. But post-COVID, uh, the situation has changed drastically for everybody. Um, now, the government, Australian government, has brought forward some of the strategies uh, to make sure 
that international studi students are going to get a lot of benefits studying in Australia. To list some, obviously, I've mentioned in this slide, uh, they will be giving prioritization to the international students through all the phases of the national plan. They'll, there is also alternative quarantine uh, facilities available for international students, so which helps them to obviously accommodate and support and their safe return in Australia. There is also communication in, established with international students outside Australia also, just to give them enough clarity around how things have changed post-COVID for everybody if they are planning to study in Australia. Along with that, the students and graduates, um, you know, they will be getting some visa support from uh, from the government also. As you can see, um, there was a recent announcement that international students can also get their uh, visa fees waived. Uh, of course, there are certain uh, conditions that as mentioned, if you are affected with COVID, you can certainly, you know, um, take that benefit if you are affected badly with the studies. Along with that, they have also provided some regulatory relief. Uh, some of the university has come forward, community people have come forward, government has come forward to offer some sort of relief and financial support to the international struggling students here in Australia. So the future for them looks pretty good. Uh, I know the last two years were not really great um, for, for all across the countries. I wouldn't just mention about Australia, but each and every country was, was heavily influenced with the pandemic. Now, obviously, um, Australia has come forward and is all braced up to help international students in uh, and also giving them extra support, which will help them in, in staying here. Um, they're also planning on to give some targeted promotion in the Australian education sector. There's a risk uh, support to the risk providers also, any risk provider for, for that instance. Um, and also uh, one of the great news, which I think a lot of international students will be really happy, is that they have offered uh, to work more than 20 hours. So you can work 40 hours a week if you're working in a targeted uh, set targeted sectors that uh, they would be needing. So obviously a lot of health professionals, for instance, will certainly be there. Apart from that, um, they have also provided flexibility to offshore students while the borders were closed. They have allowed students who were not able to use their visa, obviously come to Australia, plan um, and travel to Australia and finish their visa and obviously take advantage of um, you know the, the practical life, not just obviously online studies. So um, law, Australian government has decided that the people who are not able to utilize their student visa or have uh, not been able to utilize their temporary graduate visa, there has been an announcement that students can obviously, um, you know, uh, reapply their 405 visa. They can also use the student visa, uh, you know, fee visa fees waived off. So obviously there are a lot of uh, advantages and a lot of uh, you know, new things are coming in for the students. So choosing Australia as a destination to study is certainly a smart choice, I, I would say. Um, now, obviously, um, studying in Australia, all those sorts of clarification is already there. But uh, apart from that, there are there are a lot of students who who are unaware that uh, that in Australia there's a serious shortage of skilled people, uh, especially in the information technology industry. Now, because I'm talking about information technology industry, I'll, I'll obviously focus on um, the information technology sector. Now. Um, many people don't know, a lot of people obviously who come come from different uh, countries, um, they obviously don't know the market um, or they don't have enough awareness about the Australian market or their, their targeted course market. Now this lack of awareness has, uh, you know, uh, has actually stopped students to avail the opportunities that they could have possibly availed. Seen many students who probably, you know, study the course, get a good grades, but they end up, uh, you know, struggling a lot in finding the right opportunity. I would say it's not that they are, they are not, there are not right opportunities available for you. I believe that they are just not aware of how to access those opportunities. Uh, so that is one thing I've noticed that a lot of international students, when they come to Australia, that's where they struggle a lot because there's a there's a lack of awareness. There's a less preparation probably to understand uh, what what is the future look like to you? How is the market for you? What is the demand of the course that I'm going to do? Am I going to get job? And obviously getting an Australian experience is a big advantage uh, for anyone. Um, you can definitely add onto your resume. It's a, And obviously you will be open to global opportunities if you get a chance to work in the same industry. Now I have heard many students saying, I don't find job. Uh, I don't think so. They, they give jobs to the student, this and that. But I believe uh, if you use the right approach, uh, you would understand. And in this particular slide, as you can see, 
that there's a there's a shortage in different sectors in the different areas um, system analyst programmers um, database uh, system administrator even overall if we see uh, the ict professional the in the percentage wise the shortage was 21% so obviously uh, what it tells me it tells me that if uh, in future if i'm going to obviously studying in australia because there's there's a shortage of skilled people uh, there's an opportunity that if you are a skillful person and obviously if you have studied uh, from a from a from a university which is emerged with all the technology certainly you are going to get some better opportunities for yourself now obviously um, skill shortage is not limited to just uh, these areas but if i have to list down some of the occupations you know which are really short and obviously state wise you know which state to plan on so coming to the next slide uh, this tells you about the shortage by the occupations um, so there are different occupations listed here uh, analyst system analyst so you could see there's a long list of occupation mentioned here now if you look at the different states it tells you where there is a shortage so obviously um, there's a moderate shortage for ict analyst but there's a um, you know, strong demand for uh, for the other areas such as analyst, programmer, developer, software engineer, tester. Now, all these areas, there's a strong future demand. And some of the state, as you can see, for instance, New South Wales, um, they have a shortage uh, of ICT business analyst. Along with that, Northern Territory. Now, um, Charles Darwin University, uh, it's a fantastic university. They have obviously, um, you know, introduced a lot of technologies. Many universities, for instance, have introduced a lot of technologies into their course programs. Now, obviously, if you are planning on to study in such states, um, this this table will give you a hint where there's a shortage of uh, obviously um, skilled people as per the occupation mentioned here. So it gives you a strong opportunity to obviously plan your uh, you know journey well. You know which state to go in so that you will be able to contribute into their economy and can also gain some practical experience, not just uh, obviously, uh, you know, graduating from the studies is one aspect of it, but also to work uh, real time in the market is, is all different. So obviously you get an opportunity to also work in the market. As you can see here, uh, there is a strong demand in some places, there's a moderate demand in some states. And obviously at this time, I think it's a fantastic time to plan your uh, you know, study and to possibly think of which uh, occupation or which profession you want to choose. I think it's important to know uh, what you want to be in future. Uh, studying just information technology alone is not helpful, obviously. Um, you need to um, harbor skills, uh, specialized skills, which will help you in getting more opportunities. Now, coming to the, um, obviously, there's a shortage of occupations. Now, we've seen that there's a shortage of ICT professional across all states and in some of the occupations as well. Now, um, this also indicates that in future, the demand of these occupations or these professionals will rise a lot. Um, and if I have to um, you know, touch base a little bit about the future demand, then here it is. This is how it looks like. So if you look at the highest uh, demand that we can see is basically a strong demand in pretty much all the sectors. 75% uh, uh, demand, you could say, in business system analyst, analyst and programmers, database and system administra administrators and ICT security specialists, ICT ne network and support professionals. Now, um, when I look at um, all these uh, different occupations and its strong demand in the market, uh, what it tells me that a um, lot of students, uh, when they graduate, when they finish their studies, they basically, uh, you know, not focus a lot on choosing the specialization or, or understanding that when they study a broad, deg uh, broad degree, let's say they've just studied uh, Bachelor's of Information Technology. Now they've not picked up um, any specialization for themselves. What exactly, you know, they'd like to be in future. I know that the learning outcomes or the career outcomes uh, Post, every course study is already mentioned to you. The information is given to you. But I think the students does not pick up the specialized area and work towards obviously, you know, uh, building their skills. Now, this uh, presentation uh, will help you in understanding which occupations you could possibly target, uh, you know, keeping their demand in mind, keeping, you know, obviously in mind that there's a serious shortage of skilled people in, in some of these IT sectors. Now, um, some of the 
various IT specialization courses that you could see in Australia. Okay. Are these. Sorry about this. My presentation is just going up and down, but I hope you're catching, uh, you're with me in this presentation. Now, if I have to talk about the major IT specialization, uh, these are the ones which we picked up Our a um, lot of students basically go for software engineering, business analytics, enterprise management, network and cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, cloud computing, web development, mobile app development, computer games, and digital media. Now, these are the major IT specialization. Now, not very certain if international students have opted up this specialization, but these are the major ones we've identified. Uh, lots of international providers provide across all um, you know, parts of Australia. We have picked up uh, some of the you know, hot one out of this. Um, some of them may have already seen, but these are the hot courses which we believe uh, keeping the emerging technologies in mind, as I said. This topic, uh, this presentation is about the emerging technologies, new technologies. So keeping those new technologies in mind, some of the hot courses which are there in the market are artificial intelligence, network and cybersecurity, and information systems. Now, obviously, information systems, network and cybersecurity, these, uh, some of you may have already heard about these courses, but obviously what it does to you, what help it does to you in terms of um, your career outcome in terms of how the market looks like, how the demand goes in. Uh, that is something, as I said, I was mentioning earlier that we somehow know what we, with, we want to be somewhere, that we want to be IT professional. But one thing that we sometimes don't know is that, um, you know, if we want to be an IT professional, um, what specialization do I want? Uh, what exactly do I, you know, do I want to study? Or if I'm going to study this particular course, uh, what is that I'm going to gain? Um, obviously, you you read a lot of information on the website, on the internet, on various sectors, but obviously, I wouldn't believe if any student would sit and actually would do extensive research about how, how the Australian market looks like, studying in Australia, how it will benefit them, or uh, how does the market look like for them? So nothing to worry. The, the, this presentation and these uh, upcoming parts we are mentioning about those uh, hot courses in detail. Uh, how does your career would look like if you're going to study these courses? Um, the first one we have is networking and cybersecurity course overview. Now, this course is available obviously on various levels. You could study in um, you know, diploma level, bachelor's level, master's level. Various universities are available. Uh, you could get in touch with um, any of our education consultants across Australia and also other parts of the country. Um, and you could also get information in brief around which universities provide these courses. And obviously um, their fees, scholarship, all sorts of information our education consultant can certainly give you. I'm just going to give you an overview of this course. So obviously, as I mentioned, um, net, these courses are basically the one uh, which are looks like the future of uh, obviously the information technology. Now, um, this is one of the fastest growing sector um, as of the moment. Obviously, cybersecurity and networking. Um, with the emergence of technology, um, things have become very easier, obviously. Who would know that we will be able to network uh, globally? Uh, we, we need not to worry about it. I, As I said, um, because I'm a 90s kid, I can certainly remember the time when obviously we used to have, my father used to have a mobile with a very long antenna. And uh, it would be more like a you know status symbol than actually to use the technology. So I, I actually come from the era where I've seen mobile like this to to you know iPhone 12 and latest technology Siri, and we've got Alexa. We have we've got technology in our homes everywhere, kitchen. You say it, you name it, you find technology everywhere. So networking and all this is, has been possible obviously with the emergence of technology. But apart from Networking, when you network, when you share information, another important aspect to keep in mind is obviously security of information that you share. And cybersecurity is another aspect. And cybercrime is, is one emerging problem uh, which technology is trying to solve, obviously. And these two um, you know, areas are very broad, uh, growing a lot. And Australian government has also come forward in Obviously, you know, introducing a lot of information around, uh, you know, various initiatives that can help international students. 
Now, obviously, it focuses on security of information system, as I said. Now, a lot of students may not know that in 2026, uh, the number of jobs, new jobs that will be introduced in networking and cybersecurity area or industry is basically 17,000. Now, this is just a prediction for 2026. Now, as, as I said, the sectors are growing, um, considering that how important the cybersecurity is because everything, uh, almost everything is becoming digital. Uh, and now at this time, it is very important that now that the businesses are expanding, the networks is expanding, everything is becoming so global. It is very important to secure that information. So now the government has spent a lot of money um, in cybersecurity sector and uh, 5.6 billion actually it is. And they are deemed to reach at 7.6 billion by 2024. Now, it's a billion dollar industry. It's a big industry. So obviously, the opportunities are also gigantic. Um, along with that, as I said, there are several initiatives uh, that has come forward by Australia just to, you know, um, just to drive the innovation. So as you can see, Cybersecurity Research and Collaboration Hub. Now, they are designed to obviously bring forward the new innovations in the market. And they are also, you know, focusing um, uh, on uh, picking up some of the skilled uh, people, uh, skilled students. So students who will probably be studying in the last semester. Some universities obviously have a tie up with uh, with big uh, digital platforms and they obviously help students uh, a lot to you know, possibly do internship or, you know, um, all the industry partners that they have with the university help students a lot to, you know, understand the market or maybe network with different people. Um, so by studying this course, obviously, uh, as I said, uh, you know, the government is also targeting bringing innovations. The in institutions are also trying a lot to bring forward uh, the latest curriculum, which will, you know, the, the modern uh, information that will help students to, you know, plan their future ahead very well. Now, this particular course, um, some of the institutions that you're going to study with, it is also accredited course from professional accreditation um, uh, called, um, it's Australian Computer Society, but apart from that, it's ISCO also, which called, uh, certified Network Associate. It is all listed there in the slide. Um, apart from that, I'd like to actually highlight about this uh, initiative called Academic Centers of Cyber Security Excellence. Now, this basically it is it is a strategy uh, that gives recognition to actually Australian universities that uh, successfully demonstrate high level of cyber security education and training competencies and research capabilities and strong connection to the government. Now um, they are providing fund of 1.9 uh, million uh, over the four years, starting from 2017 to 2020. And they have obviously, um, if I have to list on one university, then University of Melbourne, um, you know, Edith Corbin University. Now they have, uh, establishment operation with obviously um, ACCSE. So this tells me that obviously uh, Australia, Australian University will definitely, um, you know, will work wonders for you if you're planning on to learn the latest technology, because considering, as I said, now Australian government, you know, now pre-COVID, post-COVID, the strategy has come and all the plans and all the things that we are hearing, uh, it all indicates that Every sectors, uh, especially uh, the IT sectors, um, health sector, these technology, especially the areas where technology can influence, um, all these sectors are going to emerge. All these sectors are going to become really, really big in future. Now, um, as I said, this session, we are going to also cover about your career projection and how things look for you if you are going to study this course. So next is uh, your career projection and market outlook. Um, a lot of people, a lot of students may not know that the number of vacancies uh, over the years have actually increased a lot. Um, and uh, there is a serious uh, vacancies. Um, you know, these two tables, as you see here, I'll, I'll direct towards this one. So there are two you could see. These two ba tables basically tells you about uh, the vacancies of jobs available for everyone. And it also tells the field spot. Sorry, I'll go back. Tells you the field spot. So 5.4 is basically the number of people who are 
suitable for the vacancies for ICT network and support professionals. And 25.5 people, 25.5% um, of people are actually, um, you know, have applied for it. Um, and out of this overall, you could see um, if we have to take the ratio of it, uh, the number of, uh, you know, filled spot and the number of vacant spot are a lot and the percentage that it says is 63%. So um, all the advertisement, as you can see in ICT network and support professional, you can see that there is a 63% of vacancies still available and they don't have a suitable candidate for those. Apart from this, um, as I mentioned, there's a shortage of uh, professionals. In the shortest that I mentioned, um, you know, ICT security specialist was actually in the strong future demand. So we can see that there is a strong demand for the people to obviously work in the cyber security area or networking area or as a network uh, security specialist. And the projected growth for this particular industry is basically 30.38, which was actually among the highest uh, uh, among the other occupations that I mentioned. It also obviously has an application in various sectors, cyber security. It, it helps in every aspect. It helps government. It helps obviously businesses, uh, even human so, I mean, any ordinary person to a business, to anyone, uh, obviously, it has a huge importance. Obviously, we all use social media, Facebook, uh, Instagram, now, all these social media. It's very important to make sure that you're safe uh, from the cyber crime, uh, obviously, from all the hacking, all sorts of things. So, um, this profession is certainly very fancy, uh, going to definitely grow. And because the technology is also submerged so much into this industry that um, going uh, in future, this this study is definitely going to be very interesting and you're going to learn a lot of stuff. Um, apart from this, you can say in the side table that uh, the revenue from uh, this industry uh, in 2016 was just 2.2 billion. But in 2026, it is expected to grow to 6 billion, uh, which is, you know, a huge growth. Now, obviously, um, I know by just merely writing number or predicting number, uh, I know it just, just doesn't tell. But I think you can see yourself, uh, obviously, in day-to-day -day life, how technology has influenced. So, obviously, uh, the demand for the, all the sectors that we are mentioning, we feel like is definitely going to increase. Now, uh, the second one that I was talking about was cloud computing artificial intelligence course overview. Now, um, artificial intelligence, cloud computing. Now, these two have an important role in our life. Uh, you know, uh, if, I, if I should say, uh, the slide on the side also tells you about where it helps. It helps in natural resources and environment. It helps in health, aging and disability, cities, towns and infrastructure. So the AI technology has developed, uh, you know, the better towns, cities, infrastructure is Im improved. Obviously, it's nothing but using software engineering techniques. Now, um, both of these technologies, both of these sectors are obviously uh, heavily uh, work in, in, in conjunction with other sectors. And this helps a lot in obviously make life easier for all of us. But if you're studying this course, obviously you're going to learn about the software engineering techniques. It is available on all level, vet and higher education level. And to give you an example, some of the universities have obviously, um, you know, used uh, the technology in into their uh, universities as well, which has helped the students a lot. I've given an example here um, of uh, University of Wollongong uh, because they have developed um, a smart infrastructure. They develop a facility um, along with biometrics. Uh, it's an app called Ask Easy. Now, Ask Easy is an app which help uh, the disabled people um, in navigating, uh, obviously, uh, while they're using the wheelchair. So it helps in mapping, navigating, and it it adds on some more feature uh, to, to your wheelchair. So this technology has helped a lot, a lot of people uh, in future, uh, obviously. And apart from this, Ask Easy app, or sorry, a mix too. So there is um, Ask Easy app, which helps the homeless people to find out uh, about the different sorts of, uh, you know, facilities around you. For example, if you need a health uh, checkup, if you need any other facility, you can use Ask Easy Help and you can um, ask for help through using this app. Now, this app has helped around three, uh, 360,000 people who were at risk of homelessness. So you can see how uh, the technology can influence and can you know change your life completely? And coming back to the University of Wollongong smart infrastructure, 
it basically is a technique which they have developed to help uh, the disabled people who use wheelchair so they have obviously installed some latest uh, features and technologies which helps them to obviously navigate better and many other applications uh, are installed which helps them obviously uh, making their life much more easier so obviously technology and uh, university uh, all these have a very close relationship obviously because when they reinforce such technology into their curriculum uh, they also um, you know uh, inspire other people to to do some creative things now these kind of obviously uh, application um, and there are a lot of uh, in fact uh, technology development a lot of uh, new applications and a lot of things have come into the market with the help of artificial intelligence and cloud computing so obviously uh, it has changed everything for us um, so obviously students can also get an opportunity to to obviously do something uh, make some creative app help other people if you obviously watch some creative shows you would see that there are a lot of interesting technologies applications have come into the market uh, which are very unique very innovative uh, if you are obviously uh, you know studying such courses in australia might as well you will be the next person to go to the shark tank and present your idea present your app so obviously uh, this helps a lot uh, students to plan everything and bring forward their uh, creativity and do some technological wonders uh, if he have to mention about its career projection uh, the market definitely look pretty good for uh, the people who would want to be um, you know artificial intelligence professional or um, software programmers or testers so as i mentioned earlier also th this this industry is forecast to add trillions of dollars in the global economy in coming decades but obviously we would not want um, just to technology take over everything but the brain behind these technologies again a human so we have a sort of control over regulation over the things and this uh, emergence of technology and the future for students uh, who want to be into this profession looks pretty bright um, the growth rate is 33.97% um, and also the number of students who study information technology in the last um, you know 5 years have increased it has gone almost double so obviously a lot of people have now identified um, how artificial uh, or how uh, this whole industry itself is so creative and so lucrative for students in future now as i said australian government um, you know they are planning to bring forward many changes uh, into their migration into their education they are changing it's, it's changing you know uh, very frequently and most of the initiatives that they have so far come looks good for students uh, it looks like um, things are going to get better for them it's going to in fact get fantastic for for everybody who had you know been suffering or who had suffered any issue during the pandemic time or could not plan their journey many people had their you know um, the examination cancelled a lot of things have happened but now it is a high time for you to plan your journey and if you wish to study in a foreign country i think australia definitely can be a good place because um, the number of temporary skill visa holders in professional occupation has fallen and now obviously uh, the way everything looks to me i mean the way uh, they are bringing some strategies forward towards international education it tells me only one thing um, that the people who have um, you know who have skills uh, who have learned uh, not just the technological you know understanding but also have you know other skills and have the modern latest curriculum and are equipped with confidence and skills can certainly have a better future for them and can avail better global opportunities um there is a consulting firm mckinsey uh, now they are estimating that the digital technologies it could actually contribute to 140 to 250 billion in australian gdp by 2025 now um i actually would possibly believe that because um, the government initiative the technologies the smart technology in fact used in various you know um aspects and activities of of life and sectors indicated that uh, future looks bright uh, and obviously the artificial intelligence uh, has developed a lot over the past few years as i said so obviously um we can look at a brighter future for everybody now these two tables um earlier as i mentioned um that there was a table mentioning about the vacancies as you can see here the vacancy for the ict professionals seems to be 70% which is pretty great so the number of uh, applications which are open for people to apply on different occupations are vast 
than people who are actually applying and getting it. So it tells me that uh, the opportunity for students after graduation looks pretty good. You could always go for the graduate roles that can help you a lot in getting or internship for that matter. Many universities have great tie ups with, you know, latest businesses who use the latest technology that can help you to also familiarize with that. Now, this table tells me the growth in Australia, uh, the average annual economic uh, growth uh, by the decade. So you could say 2020s, they're predicting. And obviously, it has just gone up over the time, 90s, 60s, 60s, shown some fluctuation. But in short, uh, 2020s, it has gone up. So the future looks like it is going to uh, emerge more. It is going to develop more in Australia. Now, the next one, which is the information system courses overview. Now, it's basically um, nothing. It's not a heavy course which will be, you know, too much of uh, programming or this. I know all the uh, all the specialization that I've mentioned earlier. Some people would be just, you know, holding their head. What all these are? I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is not for me, uh, not meant for me because I can't understand the complex computer language. I don't know the programming. I don't think so. I can really do that because, as I said, um, to, to be a specialized uh, IT professional, obviously, you need to harbor those strong technical skills. Also need to learn all those skills that that's why you're a specialized IT professional. So obviously, um, if uh, apart from all those things, if you would like to study, um, you know, uh, about a system which does not constitute of lots of, you know, complex IT technology, then information system is the course for you. Uh, it tells you about obviously an approach, an interdisciplinary approach to further developing your business acumen. Um, the students or the graduates, they will learn how to, you know, critically um, analyze the core business functions, uh, can possibly suggest some strategies, um, can also help in obviously managing the risk. Um, and also uh, there's a large complex, as I said, uh, the companies are becoming global. They're expanding everywhere. There's no limit. Uh, for a company uh, in a way if they wish to expand with, and if they have the enough resources and technology. Obviously, technology will have uh, great importance here apart from just the other external resources if they would like to expand. Now, as uh, the business expanding, the information expanding, the data is expanding. Now, all those large data, uh, all those large systems uh, global, with global companies, it is it is impossible for obviously a human to to collate all that data. Uh, they can, you cannot read, um, you know, uh, lost thousands and thousands pages of financial statement or you know a big IT company. You would you would go mad, obviously. So information system helps you, and obviously analyze large amount of data, and give you uh, an interpretation that helps you to you know, make an informed decision about the business, whether, you know, your business is at risk or what sort of suggestion you need to do. So a role of, of an information system, I mean, a person who's going to study this course, they will going to learn about um, these types of skills, which are very, very essential in a business setting. So obviously um, you would be expert in traditional aspects of business, but also the IT aspects. So it is an amalgamation of business system, uh, business and also uh, the various systems and technologies used in, in different businesses. And th that will also help you to understand how to collect, use and store the data. So in short, uh, this, um, this particular course will familiarize you how to analyze the data to give the uh, sound decision to a business, which helps a lot in improving the business. And if you are going to study this course, of course, uh, there's a professional accreditation for all sorts of courses that are going to do along with this one. So if you study this course as accreditation available on all level, diploma, bachelor's, master's, as I said, if you would like to know where you can study this course and how the scholarship looks like, you can get in touch with their education consultants and they will be able to help you out with that. Now, this is the projection uh, for obviously information systems. So the major occupation in the information system course is basically system analyst, business analyst and programmers, obviously. <coughs> As you can see table uh, on the left hand side, this is uh, an Australian um, uh, website where you could see there are various industry sections and industry contribution. If you would look at the uh, occupation, I've just highlighted the business um, system analyst uh, occupation. It is on skill level one. Um, obviously, if you would want to understand the migration aspect of it, I'm not the expert. Obviously, our migration agents in the upcoming sessions, you may have 
some migration um, you know uh, sessions where you would understand how the migration um, looks like for this particular occupation however at this stage um, there is a projected growth of 27.58 as you can see in, in this particular slide and then also the vacancy for this uh, particular occupation is 75 percent and only filled spot are 5.8 percent so you can see that there's a huge uh, number of uh, you know uh, job vacancies in this uh, particular one um, and in fact, uh, many uh, global company, I don't know if international students know, but global companies are hiring on graduate level. So people who are generally studying in the last semester, uh, they have a chance to approach the global companies such as Ernst & Young, PwC, Hudson. Now you could, uh, you know, join their graduate uh, analyst roles. Now these graduate roles are open to obviously uh, students who are studying or finishing or close to study or have finished just recently. Uh, obviously, there's a strict selection, but this is this is a fantastic opportunity if for students who just graduate and to go on in the market and look for graduate roles. Now, not a lot of people uh, possibly try that way. But I've seen this working for some students. I'm sure this will work for you guys as well. Of course, if you need a uh, more career advice, our consultants are available to give you more hint around it. Uh, with respect to um, obviously the short, I was all, also mentioning about the sh skill shortage in various sectors. Now, New South Wales. And NT, uh, I was highlighting on the table as well that these two have recorded uh, the shortage in the ICT, obviously system analyst and business analyst professions. Now this gives a great opportunity. New South Wales is a huge uh, state. Uh, various universities are available there and NT, Charles Darwin University for me, it's fantastic university. So you've got uh, study options also in these states. You could obviously target to study there. And of course, even the other states for that matter, it doesn't matter. You have, you can prepare and brace yourself very well how things are going to be for you. Apart from that, the shortage for this was 38%, which was um, highest among the others actually. So as you can see, a lot of graduates um, have shown their interest in information system, obviously, because it is something that a student who, who had no, not, uh, no prior uh, relation with information technology and had no prior background, they can also study this course. So this gives, gives it an extra edge. So obviously, a lot of people have expressed their interest to study this program. But obviously, um, the chance of your employment heavily, obviously, uh, you know, uh, have an impact of your career choices or your study choices. Uh, the table below you can see it tells uh, the skill level uh, group, obviously, and the change in employment, the shift in employment for, uh, according to the level. So I've only uh, mentioned and highlighted uh, the bachelor one because among the other uh, certificate three diploma, uh, if I've taken this one out because the bachelor's students have received uh, or the students who have done bachelor's or master's will receive more number of uh, employment opportunities or have access to more number of opportunities. So obviously, uh, all the students who've just finished their high schooling, high time to plan your bachelor's now. Obviously, the career opportunities are enormous. If you would still like to study on a smaller level, say diploma leading to bachelor or in any way, for instance, um, any sort of student who, who expressed their interest to study this program, we are certainly uh, there to help you out to understand uh, whether you can study these program, uh, programs or not. But yes, studying on higher skill level or higher education level certainly help you in, in getting more opportunities. But that does not mean that your opportunities will be limited if you study just diploma. But obviously understand uh, uh, the career outcome for you once you choose the program. Now, uh, in any, I know you must be wondering what this is about core competencies. Now, we've talked a lot about um, technology. Uh, we've talked about the type of courses uh, that are emerged with such technologies. But um, as, as we say, technology is not just everything. Technology is also run by human brain. So there is not just technology that we need to know. Uh, it's not just the technical skills that we need to know, but the other important aspects in getting selected in any job interview is some of the core competencies. As you can see in some organizations, some global organizations, sometimes they also mention in their selection criteria, right? If you have applied for any global level company, I mean, I'm referring to the people who have already finished their studies and you know would want to plan their masters or something in future in Australia, but to those uh, targeting those people, 
obviously if you have seen if you have applied in global company or have worked in a global company you could see that they have a set selection criteria or core competencies that they need in in a successful candidate now australia obviously equip you with the technical skills we've mentioned we've learned about what they will give you what what basically the future for you in studying this technology but apart from that another important aspect is to learn about the core competencies or otherwise known as employability skills or soft skills now according to one survey it says that the employer uh, generally give more preference to the person who has these uh, the core competencies or the uh, soft skills or employability skills not just the technical skills so obviously it's very important to learn these skills now why i'm highlighting this is because your universities or australian university place high importance on these uh, employability skills or soft skills now um, there was also a survey conducted in which most of the employee employed people um, the percentage was 56% so 56% of employed people um, you know uh, are in the occupation that require 8 plus so there are total 10 uh, main core competencies like uh, time management uh, business ma uh, time management or uh, you know commun communication skills or many other x y z you would you would know apart from them um, now on scale of these 10 core competencies um most of the employed people who are in the occupation they require actually eight plus core competencies this is i'm referring to the australian market now obviously uh, what it tells me is that if you you know can develop uh, probably um, you know the latest app you can you know crack any code you could you could develop any system or any program anything but if you don't know how to present that system or how to basically you know share your skills with people you are going to again you know somewhere get lost you know in all the people people will not learn about your innovation you would not be there in the market now there's a high importance of obviously learning the soft skills employability skills not just technical skills so any aspiring students i'm going to place a very very important emphasis on obviously uh, you know familiarizing yourself with some of the soft skills interpersonal skills how you talk how you sit how you obviously these are these are the skills that cannot be taught you certainly with time obviously when you will start working the professional setting you would know how important it is so when you're studying in the universities there are various uh, you know internship program mentor program or uh, student services support services support groups that uh, that takes out your leadership skills that takes out your initiative uh, you know uh, towards doing different things now um, i'm not surprised when i hear that in some university some research candidates or some masters candidate bachelor's candidate had developed something in fact um, the solar car uh, i still remember when i was in my home country i've seen uh, a student of final year uh, you know developing a small solar car on his own so sometimes anyone you know uh, can surprise you if they have the right skills like platform obviously and as i said uh, the australian government has taken various initiative to bring it forward and to make it more happening for students now uh, we are very close to obviously wrap up our session i i hope and i'm sure you're not completely gobsmacked with the information that you are given it's, it was very technical uh, i tried my level best to obviously explain you how you know it has an importance in day to day life and how studying these courses can help you but if i have to summarize the whole thing um, what i take out of this entire uh, you know presentation is that the market for uh, the information technology is very competitive uh, it's growing um, you know we've mentioned about the increased number of vacancies so obviously students 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 there are jobs in it it's not like you won't find jobs once you graduate there are jobs you just need to have right skills as i said core competencies and technical skills both are very important so obviously place high, huge importance and australian universities are going to help you in that apart from that there are various government initiative we've mentioned some like uh, the cyber security agreement where they are placing a uh, high importance to the students who've got more skills in the cyber security area similarly there are various technology we've also talked about some of the smart technology developed by the university we gave example um, so like this obviously the universities are also constantly trying to you know uh, make sure that they keep on updating their curriculum in accordance to the market demand now that is something 
which which helps a lot in obviously you know shaping your career and helping out what you want to be in future um we've also talked about the skill shortage obviously which indicates that there are a lot of there's a need of professionals so obviously more and more number of people studying in such uh, you know techn- technological advanced university can help them to obviously work in these relevant sectors and of course as i said it is not limited to just um, you know working in 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 it industry if you are a graduate if you have done a bachelor's or masters whatsoever you can use your skills in other industries we've talked how these industry influence health sector how these industry influence pretty much all the sectors so any it person can also take on their technical skills and their other skills and can work in other sectors also so it opens avenue to all the sectors and obviously global opportunities the market is huge the career growth is huge every occupation has a huge growth and apart from that obviously the australian government has given flexible options to students um there's a work visa for students once you finish it and obviously um if you have to learn about your migration pathway or how you could possibly you know uh, post your work if you would like to stay here permanently or the other aspects related to your migration you could also discuss with the migration team um now obviously i hope uh, the first session was very power packed so obviously i hope you learned a lot in this session and uh, you may have a lot of questions uh, during this session so i would uh, actually like to ask student if they have any questions during this session they can most certainly leave that in the comment section i'll be more than happy to helping you out uh, and then i hope that during this session you've learned a lot about the different aspects of it if there is any question i'm happy to address it later thank you very much for listening i will now uh, give the stage to our next presenters who are going to give you the information around the courses thank you very much anna Thank you mom for your presentation. Please leave your feedback. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Forgot to tell guys, please leave your feedback how you felt about the session and we will we'll take it from there. Thank you. Thank you so much mom for joining us and for sharing so much information. We can tell that you know every detail about this topic. <laughs> it was very technical and deep in information. I hope everyone has enjoyed it. And as mom Prit says, please keep your posting your questions in the comment section and she will Uh, answer to then in the end of this session. Uh, now I would like to invite our first guest, Mr. Lau from the Put Department Chair for the Department of Computer Science and Software Engineer from Swinburne University of Technology. Thank you so much for being here today, and I would like to request you to start your presentation. Thank you. Okay, pressure. All right. Um, let's see. Can you see my screen? Yes, that's perfect. Okay, that's good. Hi, hello, uh, everyone. Um, yeah, um, I'm from Swinburne University of Technology. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the courses in Swinburne. Uh, before I start, I would like to say a word related to our country. On behalf of those present, I acknowledge the traditional owner of the land on which we now meet. I pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. I also pay my respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders uh, of Australia, and hope that the path towards reconciliation continues to be shared and embraced. All right, um, science, engineering, computer science, and also IT at Swinburne. Uh, my, uh, my name is Man Lau. This presentation is based on a similar presentation prepared by my uh, department chair, uh, Kaslan Chua. All right, uh, CS and IT or slash IT degrees at Swinburne. Okay, uh, we have two big categories. One is the engineering degree. I think in um, previous presenter, they uh, mentioned about software engineering or software engineer as a job opportunity. So we have an engineering degree Uh, with the software major. Now, the second category is the um, 
normal bachelor degree, ICT degree. Now in Australia, it is a bit different because engineering degree is a four year degree, but a normal bachelor degree is a three year degree. Now in the ICT degree or the normal bachelor degree, we have a, a wide spectrum from computer science on one end, which is the CS represent. Um, it is very technical in terms of knowing artificial intelligence inside out, cybersecurity inside out, IoT as well. On the other end of the spectrum, which is what we call IS, information systems. It is more on to how to apply the technology in the business sector so that to establish their information system for the corporate, for the government, to use it wisely. In the middle of it is kind of a mix uh, of CS and IS. It is what we call the IT degree. It is more on to kind of the supportive roles. Okay, now let's move on to our engineering degree. Now, in terms of, of knowing the university structure, we have a school of engineering which governs the engineering degree. I am from the other school, the School of Science, Computing and Engineering Technologies. In my school, we have the CS degree, Computer Science Bachelor degree, and also we have the ICT Bachelor degrees. Uh, so of engineering the structure, we have a school head. Uh, we have several departments in the School of Computers, uh, sorry, Science, Computing and Engineering Technologies. We also have um, our school dean and also various departments. Now, in terms of the engineering degree, um, at Swinburne, we call it Bachelor of Engineering and we with a tech called software major. Okay. So in the engineering degree, we actually have a lot of different majors. Architectural, biomedical engineering, civil, product design, robotics and mechatronics. Um, our school actually focus more on the software major of the engineering degree. So that's why we call, sometimes we call it the software engineering degree. Okay, now uh, engineering degree, you can also do a double degree, which is Bachelor of Engineering slash double with computer science. It can be double with law, double with science. Uh, it is up to you for your career aspiration. Okay. Um, in the engineering degree, you also have, we also have a professional experience in engineering. Uh, this is a mandatory unit, non-credit bearing. Um, it will teach you some of the generic skills uh, when you work in the uh, engineering discipline or industry. So the professional recognition for the engineering degree, it is accredited by the uh, what we call Engineers Australia, okay, as a professional level. So after you graduate with a Bachelor of Engineering degree, you were accredited by the Engineering Australians. Uh, you are a professional, kind of a professional engineer. Okay, now when it comes to your study at Swinburne, once you enroll in, say, a particular course, let's say, for example, here is this, Bachelor of Engineering with Software Tech Major. You can actually plan ahead what are the units that you need to study in order to complete the degree. So the entire course plan is available to you once you enroll. Okay, and then you can then look at, okay, what are the subjects that I need to study and what are other alternatives uh, so that I can study to help me 
to climb up the corporate ladder, for example. Okay, now after you finish your engineering degree, there are chances that you may want to do a Master of Engineering or Master of Engineering Science or even a research degree, which can be Master by Research or a PhD. Now, when it comes to the ICT degree, as I mentioned, we have three spec uh, a wide spectrum from CS, computer science, which is very technical. We also have uh, information system. We have in the middle what we call ICT degree. OK, let's talk about ICT degree first. The ICT degree actually is more focused on how to apply the technology in a business context. So data analytic is something that you use some uh, data science algorithm to try to analyze the data and then to, let's say, predict some of the trend of the data. Okay, these are more onto the um, application of the technologies. Also, information systems are one of the uh, area of the ICT domain. Okay. Now, uh, sorry, let me. Yep. Okay, sorry. Now, when it comes to your careers in the ICT, actually, it can have a wide range. You can, let's say. For, for example, you, you are from the CS uh, as a computer science graduate, you actually build the technologies. If you are kind of an IT or ICT degree graduate, maybe you want to run the technology and use this technology to help the enterprise to grow. But when you are more onto the IS discipline, sometimes you are helping on how to use certain uh, analytical result or reporting or data trend to transform the enterprise to help shape the enterprise. OK, so there are various focuses. Okay. Now, when it comes to the um, industry experience, actually at Swinburne, we design our courses so that Every semester, the students will guarantee to have an industry based project so that they can then learn the industry trend and skills related to it. So now, um, for the uh, degrees, from the degrees perspective, we have Bachelor of Computer Science, very technical doing the AI programming, cybersecurity, uh, learning data science, and things like that, IoT, software development, and games development. These are more on to developers of the applications. So they write programs, they design programs to do specific tasks. An analogy may will be similar to building a calculator rather than using a calculator. When it comes to the Bachelor of ICT, we have free specialization or we call it major. Information technology is more skewed towards the IS perspective. Network technology is more skewed towards the network supportive and administrator roles of the job. Software technology is more onto the software thing, writing programs and deploying programs onto servers and administrate them. Okay, especially onto, for example, cloud, cloud computing. So these are uh, various major in uh, the ICT degree to shoot different uh, perspective or attributes of the people. Okay, so depending on your interests, you may want to select uh, the major that you want. When it comes to the IS side, uh, 
we have the vector of business information systems. Okay, and they have two majors. One is the business analyst. The other is the data analytics. Now, this uh, vector of business information system actually it is offered by another school as Winburn School of Business Entrepreneurship and Law. Now, no matter which degree you um, uh, study, for example, the Bachelor of Computer Science, Bachelor of ICT, and Bachelor of Business Information System, all these bachelor degree, after you graduate, you, you will be recognized by the Australian Computer Society as a prof professional in those areas. Okay. Uh, similar to the Bachelor of Engineering, um, again, um, you can actually access to your course plan. Okay. Uh, this example is just a Bachelor of Computer Science, the AI major course plan. Okay. Now, after you finish your study um, of the uh, Bachelor degree of IT, uh, CS, ICT, or B Business Information System, BIS. Okay. You can study Bachelor of Computer Science Honours. Now, Honours degree in Australia is a research-oriented degree. It prepares students to do uh, research, scientific research or computer science research um, for their PhD study. You can also study a Master of IT, Master of Data Science, Master of Cybersecurity, uh, Master of Science Network System, and Master of Engineering Science uh, with a major in Network System and Telecommunications. Now, various of these uh, postgraduate programs have different uh, years and duration because of the uh, units uh, that you require to study. Uh, of, um, final, re, um, sorry, one final thing is about the research degree. Again, after finishing the honors year, uh, what we call the honors year, which is the Bachelor of Computer Science honors, you can actually do the Master by Research or PhD. Uh, PhD is actually a research program. Now, having said that, once you finish your master's, you can actually uh, enroll uh, or apply for a PhD study. Okay, while you are studying at Swinburne, we have what we call the real option. It is um, what real means is work, it work integrated learning. Okay, it incorporates workplace and real-world industry projects into your undergraduate study, okay? As I mentioned before, every semester you will be guaranteed to have an industry-based project, okay? Then actually it is part of our real guarantee. And there are other options as well. Uh, professional placement, this is an optional. So. If you want to take it, that means you will extend your study by six or 12 months, depending on your placement's uh, duration. Now, these six or 12 months placement duration, actually you will be paid by the company for your full-time work, okay? So after two years of your bachelor degrees uh, basic study, you then decided to say, I want to work, um, to take this opportunity to do the professional placement. You can then, let's say you end up with a 12 month contract with a company, you work for them for 12 months and get paid from that company. After 12 months, you come back to finish off your study, the rest of your study, and then graduate with us, okay? So that's the professional placement. If you 
your placement opportunity is six months, then you finish your six months placement and come back to study the rest of your uh, degree. Now, at the end of, uh, let me put it this way, in, in your final year, we have a capstone project units. Now, depending on the courses, some of the capstone project units is just uh, one semester, and a there is a degree, the Bachelor of Computer Science, the capstone project actually is a two semester uh, project. So you work for the same team throughout two semester to develop an industry project, which is a larger one for an industry client. Right, uh, and you may be interested to know um, what are the potential industry partners um, or what will be your potential uh, employer if you take up the real opportunity, the professional placement. Um, uh, for example, let me see whether I can have a pen. Um, probably not. OK, let's put it this way. Um, if you can see the NAB thing, NAB actually is the National Australia Bank. All right. So it is a bank. ANZ is also another bank in Australia. OK, um, if you look far uh, on your left, if you can find Australian Government Department of Defence. OK, actually some of our students actually work in the Department of Defence for their professional uh, year. So they actually work in the Adelaide, in the defense, kind of the defense headquarters there, because um, um, they don't have a, a office in Melbourne, okay, in, in, in a sense. Uh, Holden? Um, there's something missing. Uh, actually, one of my students actually went to US uh, work with Google as well. All right. So these are our uh, industry partners. All right. Now, besides the view option, you also have the chances of doing some international uh, study offshore. Okay. Uh, it can be six to 12 months long to do a uh, exchange to other universities, uh, some may be in Europe, some in US, okay, and some some in Vietnam as well. So it all depends on your interests. Where do you want to go and do the study? OK, when it comes to the high ed, um, we expect students to take the initiative um, more active role in doing their study and learning. So uh, my recommendation is you need to be flexible, independent in the learning and also be proactive. So try to ask the questions um, that are important to your learning. OK, and also we have some support center uh, MASH is related to the math helping, statistics, physics. It is available to first year engineering students. And we also have a programming help desk. Oh, sorry, that's too far. OK, uh, programming help desk and computer network help desk for our students as well. OK, uh, once you're enrolled in our study, you, you will know about this um, uh, 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 surface more. OK, in case if you enrolled in Swinburne, you have you want to have more advice. Actually, we have our uh, special team, our students HQ. They have student life and campus life as 
Swinburne to help you to decide what's the um, options that you can uh, have. And also related to the live at Melbourne around campuses. And also you may, that's related to your living thing. If it is related to the academic matters, you may want to contact your course director, major discipline coordinator, or the unit convener who is responsible for each individual uh, subjects. Or as Winburn, we do not call it a subject, we call it a unit, a learning unit or a teaching unit. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Thank you so much, Mr. Lau. Uh, if we have any questions, I will address them to you in the end of the session. Uh, sure. It was a very exciting presentation. I'm sure that every student listening to it will be very glad to know that you guys have such good business partners. So if they get a chance to in the future work for Google and um, so many other big companies, I will be very excited about it. And also the opportunity to study a semester abroad, I'm sure they will be very interested in that. Sure. Uh, thank you. For now, I would like to request uh, Miss Lydia to join us. And she's also part of Swinburne uh, University. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you so much. You can start your presentation. Thanks. Oh, actually, um, yeah. um, the presentation from Swimban is actually uh, Mr. Uh, Lau's presentation. Mm -hmm. So um, what I just want to add in is that um, uh, it's about our scholarship because okay. Swimban, um, yeah, it was just very quick. Uh, so um, as you know, we have uh, offered a scholarship since 2021 and it's a very generous uh, international uh, for international students. Um, it's a merit scholarship based on uh, students uh, previous academic transcript, but um, it's um, basically um, you know, for overseas students, we of course um, convert their uh, academic, um, you know, um, qualification to Australian standard. But basically, is over sixty percent average. Ever, all these students will have uh, a scholarship. So, if a student um, achieve sixty to sixty nine percent um, average score, they will receive ten percent. Um, of their uh, of of the tuition fee, the entire tuition fee for whatever three or four years they study here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and from seventy to seventy nine, there will be twenty percent. Eighty to eighty nine, there will be thirty percent. And over that, ninety to ninety five, student will receive fifty percent of scholarship. And uh, um, from six uh, from ninety um, ninety five to ninety nine student will receive 75% scholarship. So that is uh, for um, both bachelor and master degree. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, um, and for um, master degree, if students study uh, STEM, um, you know, subjects or program or uh, business programs, um, student will also um, have the chance to receive 30% um, uh, George Swinburne scholarship. So whichever um, whichever higher student will receive it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. So yeah. we will offer that to all international students um, who join us in 2022. And so hopefully this is good news for for anyone who want to apply for um, university study in Australia. That's <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Thank you very I'm much. Sure those are very exciting news for all the all the viewers because scholarships are always very much appreciated when you are an international yeah. student in Australia. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you want to know uh, more details about the scholarships, make sure you get in touch with our team and they will be able to provide you all the information with detailing information about the scholarships available for this year already. Yeah, yeah. and just one more thing, even for pathways uh, students, we also have scholarship for them. And mm -hmm. if students uh, study 10 weeks of uh, early course at Swinburne, and they also have a scholarship. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, now I would like to play a video. We have, we're gonna have a student from Swinburne University 
talking to us here live. But before that, I would like to show a video of another student who is also a, study, a student there. And she will share a quick, uh, a brief video about her experience. I'll just play it for you now. Hi, my name is Kashish and I'm a Masters of Teaching uh, graduate from Swinman University of Technology. Uh, coming to Melbourne, the most difficult decision for one for a student is to decide what course to do and which university to go for. But it was easy for me because I was given the right guidance and I was shown the right career path. From the very beginning, I was very interested into teaching. So I decided to pursue Masters of uh, Teaching in secondary school teacher. But I did not know what counselor to go at, which uh, company would assist me the best. From a friend, I got to know about Aussies and I decided to visit the Beribi branch of Aussies, where I met a counselor and they guided me the best for my career. I was given option to look at different university, but Swinburne University was the best as for my uh, career interest for me. So I decided to apply for Swinburne University uh, under the guidance of my counselor. It wasn't that easy because I applied in the very end when the semester was about to, be about to begin. But my counselor arranged the COE uh, with his hard work and also gave me enough time to prepare for my entrance exam. Luckily, I cleared the exam and go I got into Swinburne University. I would highly recommend the students to get their counseling from Aussie's group and understand what is right for them. My experience were very, was very good and I recently graduated in November 2021 from Masters of Teaching. We hope this video can help you to make the right decision for your future in Australia. I think it's always good to hear from someone who is already studying at the university. Uh, let's see, if it's Mr. Asif in the call. Asif Rana. Uh, yep, hi. There you are. You? Thank you so much for joining us. How are you today? Yeah, I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for the inviting. inviting thank you. Uh, I would like to ask Mumpreet, she, she is our qualified education counselor here at Aussies and she has prepared a few questions for you. So Mumpreet, I'll hand over to you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Anna. How are you, Asif? Yeah, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm good, thank you. Um, I know, uh, obviously coming live, you might be very nervous, but I'll just make you a little comfortable. I'm not yeah. going to ask you yeah. any question where you have to give me any difficult answer. Just yeah. pure, blunt, honest experience of you. Uh, not wanting you to give anything, you know, sugarcoated. Just what you felt with whole of your experience is what we would like to know, obviously. Yeah. So just starting with, obviously, give us your introduction, what you do, um, what uh, Sifrana basically does. Yeah. So <laughs> hi, everyone. I'm Asifrana. I'm from Bangladesh. So currently, I finished my Master's of Data Science degree from Sunban University. So currently I'm working uh, at an internship, which was uh, in, being done in collaboration with Swinburne and Victoria government. Uh, so it's a summer internship program. So my study experience at Swinburne is like really insightful because like I did my entire course uh, fully remote and it was a like wonderful learning experience for me because I had more time to know and learn and new skills as well because I was mm -hmm. saving time in community, uh, uh, in community commit. Um, mm -hmm. The experience at Swinburne is uh, really insightful because every semester I had some project uh, units had assignments which were related to projects as well. So after finishing the assignments, I could uh, add it to my portfolio and which mm -hmm. is uh, like is creating making it more eligible for the recruiter to understand what I learned and show my skills as well. So that's pretty much it. And the lectures were very insightful as well. They, are, they helped me to learn and understand the topic. And mostly mm -hmm. the lectures in Swinburne have uh, very uh, 
uh, what experience with other rec- um, companies as well. It's like top mm-hmm. Australian government companies and private companies as well. So during the classes, they shared their own personal experience, which I'm, uh, which made me comfortable to understand how the industry, my, what the industry needs, and just prepare for me to, for my future career. Yeah, that's pretty much it, actually. It all sounds pretty great, actually. Um, to yeah. be honest, but then I have a difficult question to ask you uh, surrounding that. Sure. So you, you you said your experience was fine. You know, everything seemed great. Was there any challenge studying remotely for you that you believed you overcome over the period of time? Because obviously now everybody knows uh, post-COVID, yeah. uh, everything has changed. It's virtual. So yeah. everybody is taking time to to adapt to this new kind of learning. I know online learning was there for a while, but not yeah. that we were expecting to do it on bachelor's level, master's level. So what challenges you faced mm-hmm. and how you overcome and how Swinburne supported you in, in this time, you know, technically or in any aspect, for instance? Uh, well, just uh, I was able to do my on-campus learning for three weeks. Then after three weeks, the entire country went to lockdown. So then it was a sudden shock. So Swinburne, like, called me. I got a call from Swinburne representative as well. It's like, what am I doing all right? My, uh, am I having any mental issues or something or any stress or uh, like what's mm-hmm. every how is everything going on honestly mm-hmm. like I was completely fine because like it, I was used to that and Swinburne had already had the tools right there because I joined a lot of zoom seminars as well before uh, during on campus as well because like asking someone to be there physically it's not convenient for all of us so yeah. Basically, like I was using the tools before the pandemic came in. So for Mm -hmm. me, it's just, you know, okay, like if I want to like go and ask a a lecture about something, I can just drop in an email. Even there was sometimes like I dropped an email at 10 p.m. and I got a reply. I wasn't expecting from it, but like they did actually. So Mm -hmm. for me, like the like the adjustment wasn't that tough and I didn't feel Mm -hmm. like it. And like I was Mm -hmm. always supported by mm-hmm. Swinburne and the Swinburne staff, education staff, academic staff as well, yeah. yeah that's fantastic. Good to hear that. Um, obviously, um, if there is a set support from university in terms of all yeah. the aspect, it makes your journey much more pleasurable. Mm-hmm. We all know things were not really, you know, on track for everybody. But having said that, um, what made you choose Swinburne Technology? Uh, why not any other university? What do you think is special about uh, Swinburne University, which you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, sure. Firstly, like I did my bachelor's in computer science, then I had a degree uh, related to data science uh, during that course. So on that moment, I decided to go for and pursue a degree in related to data science because like this is what my inspiration is. So Mm -hmm. I shortlisted a few uh, universities and I was just going through their course structure. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, Among them, actually, the course structure from Swinburne stood out from the most because this is what I believe that I need to learn those skills to get like uh, increase my employability. And this is these are the topics that I wanted to learn. And compared to the other universities, their course structure was like pretty much vague, you know, like on the over the top and like. Mm -hmm. It wasn't descriptive. So that was yeah. one point. And the second point is the industry connections. So Swinman has mm-hmm. a lot of industry connections. And I got yeah. to do a lot of projects during my summer break as well. Like every mm-hmm. week in Swinman is something new. You just like my daily routine was to open up my Swinburne email account and then check what's going on. Because like every week there is something new and like happening. And I in last summer, I did a summer project with uh, AWS, which is the biggest mm-hmm. cloud provider um, globally wow. and owned by Amazon mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, I got wow. a certification through them as well. And I mm-hmm. got to represent Swinburne as, uh, there as well. And they had a competition regarding like automated uh, unsupervised uh, race. It was like fully mm-hmm. autonomous race and virtual, obviously. So I got to like uh, top it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just fit the record. Yeah. So it was a really like, you know, achieving moment for me. Exciting experience, and yeah. It, yeah, yeah, that's true. And even like I, have, after I'm graduating, like I'm still uh, connected to the Swinburne alumni. So I get the you know, uh, emails about the upcoming uh, grad roles that are coming up or the other uh, opportunities. And um, one more thing, like uh, in Swinburne, the classes sizes is not that big. So which makes, it gives you an advantage of connecting with your lecturer. Yeah, uh, they will know your name and know your face. So if something comes up, they would 
like suggest you about you should do this or do you, would you like to take this opportunity or not because this actually happened to me that's why i was just saying a uh, few weeks back i got like a, a lecturer reach out to me it's like do i want to yeah. pursue a phd in that field or something so if i went to other universities you know, universities i don't think like that would happen ever happen yeah so that's all actually fantastic uh, great to hear that so um we were talking about technologies today in our topic. Uh, obviously, yeah. you're studying a yeah. technolo technological oriented <laughs> course. So share us uh, what, uh, if, you, if you would have to shortlist or in a short summary, a technology, a new technology, which you did not know earlier, but you learned from Swinburne and you feel like, oh, wow, this is going to help me a lot in future. Yeah, I've got sure. another so question take... uh, followed by that, but I'd like to, if you, if you can share a little bit. Yeah, more. yeah, sure, sure. So technology is like using tools. That's what I believe technology is. So technology yeah. is ever changing, but what we yeah. need to learn is like how to use those technologies because uh, technology which is current now might become obsolete in five years time. So mm -hmm. regarding technologies, like I'm fully uh, IT student. So I had one unit where I had to do some data visualization. So that was completely new to me. And there I had to learn Adobe softwares. So it was pretty much steep, but like, I had to learn my way out of it and the lectures guided me how to use these tools efficiently. So yeah, that's what my newest, like what learning from it. Now I know how to use Adobe in design and Adobe Illustrator. And now I can admire like how these tools can be used to communicate with the audience visually and really you know, just entice them with your content. And it was part of my course as well because like technologies needs to be shared. The insights that I get from the data is like needs to be shared with the stakeholders, which is which might not be from a technical background. And mm -hmm. that's pretty much it actually. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask the question which obviously um, everyone would be hoping after studying from a foreign university. What uh, exciting opportunities you possibly see for yourself after finishing this course? Do you think you're going to uh, get something better uh, than obviously, you know, finishing the studies in your country, if you would have. Yeah, obviously, because uh, Australia has a lot of opportunities. So there's a lot of job opening as well. And since it's a developed country, so it's like, and data science is new, globally new. So it's just the right space to be actually. And in terms of the opportunities, like uh, I'll be entitled to get a temporary uh, resident visa, so which will allow me full work rights. So I'll be eligible to work for a company like uh, with without any restrictions. So this is one thing I'm actually looking forward to. And currently I'm shortlisting a lot of the employers and the graduate roles are opening up really soon. So yeah, I'm hoping for the best. Yeah. Oh, great. Great. Good to actually see uh, a student who's actually on top of their next step. They know what they want to do. I, I've i met a lot of students. I, I'm, I'm telling you very honest feedback. I've met a lot yeah. of students. Not, not a lot of people are actually already aware what they want to be or what they actually want to be uh, or what mm -hmm. profession or what specializ specialization they want to choose. Now, what is the one word of advice or one, you know, uh, your honest, brutal opinion to all the general public who wish to study IT? or who wish to yeah. study, uh, what is that you would like to tell them? Uh, they should keep in mind a word of advice or things they could yeah. you know, brace themselves up before they would want to come to foreign country. Yeah. So my advice would be from my experience because like I did uh, my bachelor's and my master's. Learning is not easy. Sometimes it's challenging, but you should, uh, if you have a passion for it, then it becomes a bit easier. So yeah. like just choose a course which you are passionate about rather than it will look good on your resume or you'll be you'll have higher chances of getting employed employed by them. And even I believe that in the work environment, there will be some challenges. So if you are motivated to learn and contribute to this field, that would make it a bit easier. So yeah, that's all my advice would be. Yeah, great. Uh, thank you so much, Asif. It was great definitely yeah. having this uh, brief chat with you. You certainly have yeah. shared your honest opinion, I believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was so just we really, we really respect that, that obviously. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. That's all you need. Platform to share, share my thoughts. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining, sharing your valuable experience, telling us how it was for you, of course, in this pandemic time. And I'm sure you're going yeah. to make it very, uh, you know, you're going to give a sense of ease to other people who will be very frightened to possibly explore their study options in a foreign country in this time. So thank you very much yeah. for being that honest and telling the opinion to everybody. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Thank you very much, Monpreet and Asif, and especially for his advice about telling people to definitely look for something that that is in your heart because it's a decision that will be probably be working on that for maybe 10, 20, 30 years of your life. So it's not only about your migration pathways, it's a lot about what you love to do. Uh, I would like to invite everyone else that is here because I saw in the comment session we are having a lot of questions related to migration pathways. Uh, although we cannot reply to that here because Manpreet is a qualified education counselor and not a migration agent. Although we are having a session with Mr. Weber from Sydney Office about IT migration pathways is starting in 10 minutes from now. So I have uh, place it, the link for this session in the comment session and you guys can join from there and ask all your future pathways through this course to him. Uh, also, I would like to reinforce for you guys to leave us a feedback about this event. Uh, you can join us uh, on our Facebook page. There is a post about this event and once you write a review, we're going to choose the best reviews, the most descriptive ones and give away uh, cash prizes. So make sure you join us for that. And Manpreet, would you like to say any last comments to our out audience? Thank you so much, Anna. Firstly, thank you very much, obviously, for this opportunity. Uh, but uh, I'd like to actually say a few things to students. Um, in this whole session, I know there's a lot of technical information which takes time to get your you know, head wrapped around all of that. But the, the overall thing is that uh, plan wisely when you are, uh, you know, planning to come to any foreign country, for instance, uh, understand well uh, what is the uh, economical growth or, um, you know, uh, career growth for you in, in an industry. Nowadays, the way we see the shift in migration in education or I'm, I'm particularly talking about Australia, uh, what we basically see is that not just Australia, but all the countries curriculum, they focus a lot on obviously, uh, you know, uh, technology and at the same time, they want you to to basically learn some practical skills out of it. Now, Australia is a great, great platform. Uh, a lot of uh, new changes have come. Australia has definitely, you know, taken a lot of steps to make sure the journey is very easy for students. So it is a high time for you to now plan your career goals. So obviously things are now slowly, slowly settling down. We are adjusting into this new uh, environment into everything and we know everything is becoming virtual so I think we are connected we are still more connected with each other even though the pandemic was there so I would say stay connected talk to our education consultant to understand your pathway if you have questions you could always leave your questions even after the session expired we would try to obviously get in touch with you our consultants will contact you and if you would like to contact me for any advice i will leave my details in the session and you can also get in touch with me to understand uh, broadly about this um, if there is any question for me right now i'm happy to address for 10 minutes any live questions so you could ask me now and if everything is all good we are happy to move on thank you very much anna thank you Manpreet. yeah i'm checking the comment box now here again but yeah, the questions we have, they are related to migration topics. So just to reinforce, I have just left the link in the comment session for you guys to join our session that is starting in seven minutes. And then you can ask all your migration questions to our uh, migration agent, Mr. Weber from Sydney office. Uh, thank you very much for everyone who has joined us today. Manpreet, our guest from Swiborn University, also uh, Mr. Oh, I forgot his name. Asif, <laughs> thank you for sharing your experience. And I think some. Sorry, sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt you, Anna. I can yeah. see someone's hand raised. I think it's Zubair Tariq. Could see some hand raised. I'm not quite sure. If it is for a question, ah, there there is one question here, Mr. Vinod Kumar. At yeah. what time we can know admission process? Uh, for universities for masters when is the best time to start planning to start your masters obviously if you if you have uh, there are two circumstances here one is you finish your bachelor's you're working you're employed somewhere and you are exploring your options and second is obviously you've just graduated and you're exploring a master's option in, into a foreign country the admission process is streamlined or uh, it's a lengthy process obviously um, you definitely need uh, an education consultant to help you out in this one because uh, some of the university, um, they have a representative agents 
and they accept the application through those agents. So first thing you need to do is contact Aussies. <laughs> That's the first step because you need to first understand um, if uh, what is the career pathway for you through this course. Uh, in order to obviously go through the whole admission process, our education consultant will explain you. It's a very streamlined process, starting from applying for offer letter, doing the necessary process. If you're applying for offshore, the GT process, uh, making sure that you're clear about your course that you're choosing. And obviously followed by um, uh, their, uh, you know, they will understand, they will ask you questions such as um, whether you can afford to study the program. So financial capability and statement of purpose will be given to the to the education provider to understand your career pathway, followed by fees payment and confirmation of enrollment. So it's a, it's a lengthy process. Uh, it can sound a bit complex right now, but obviously when you will uh, get in touch briefly, when you've decided what career you want to opt out, you can get in touch with us. And we'll explain you the stepwise process of it. But yes, uh, if depending upon your onshore or offshore, uh, the process may differ a little bit. But yes, um, it's certainly very streamlined. Mm -hmm. Let me answer your question. We have another one from Pratik. Uh, the question is: Is it a must to have a valid IELTS or PT while applying for the student visa? Um, yes, it is actually because obviously you're coming to. Uh, to a country where English is the first language. So obviously uh, it is very important to know that um, you have the competency to speak English, to understand English, obviously. Otherwise, what's the whole point of coming to Australia if you if you can't even read? So yes, it's very, very mandatory to have English. Yes, in some cases, universities um, for bachelor students, actually, uh, especially who are coming for masters, if they have the qualification studied in English medium, uh, there are some times uh, university may waive off the requirement of English, so you can present medium of English instruction letter from your university, which helps you in getting your English requirement waived off by university. Now, obviously, uh, Department of Home Affairs, um, the, if you look at the document checklist, there's a tool through which you could find out what documents you need for your student visa. Now, English uh, is basically required by university. Now, department goes by what is required by university, obviously, and also there's assessment level. Um, so in short, I want to say if you want a better visa outcome, I'll recommend, highly recommend to at least do any of the English examination. Um, and if, for instance, you've got some proof that you studied from English speaking country or you have any other evidence that you can obtain, which tells you that may allow you to get waiver uh, from that particular university. But still, I'll recommend better to have English scope. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Manpreet. Um, yes, I would just invite you guys again to join our next session and please make sure you leave a review for us so we can understand what you like the most about this session and improve also for the next time. We're very excited to have more and more online events like this and provide you guys a lot of information about different courses and migration pathways. Thank you so much, Manpreet, for sharing so much content with us and also our guests. So yes, so they, today even Anna got to know what technology is going to do. Mm -hmm. I think this, this is at least going to tell everybody what technology is important is. Mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you in the next sessions.